It is mission accomplished for the European Ariane 6 rocket, which successfully blasted off on Tuesday on its very first mission, carrying with it the continent's hopes of regaining independent access to space. But the team will now have to offer attractive prices in what is a fierce com competition, especially with Elon Musk's SpaceX. To tell us a bit more, Julia Seeger, our science editor, with me this afternoon. So after a four-year delay, Julia, this was an almost perfect blast-off, wasn't it? Almost a, mm -hmm. a perfect blast. And it was quite an incredible moment to witness this outburst of, of joy from the team on the ground in Kourou. Uh, you have people who have worked, hundreds of people who have worked on this project for years now from Aryan Group, the CNES, but also ESA. Now, yesterday I told you a little bit more about all of the different maneuvers that Aryan had to do to be able to uh, take uh, carry out successfully this mission in orbit from the ignition mm -hmm. of the Vulcan, um, the Vulcan engine and the two side boosters, which really enable uh, the rocket to propel itself into space and defy gravity, then uh, getting rid of those two rockets to be lighter and be able to go further into the atmosphere, and then the separation of the two different stages. And I also told you about this engine called Vinci on the upper stage of uh, the rocket. While they were able to ignite it to take it further into orbit to then release the satellites. So all of that happened without hinder. But what didn't work is at the end of the mission, they were supposed to be able to reignite the engine a third time to redirect the upper stage towards Earth. And this is a way to deal with space debris because upon re-entrance into the atmosphere, you have part of the debris that is going to um, disintegrate and burn up. And then the other part of the debris, I don't know if you know this, but mm -hmm. it's actually crashed into the Pacific Ocean to a point that we call Nemo Point. This is the furthest from any land surface. This is somewhat of a graveyard for old satellites mm -hmm. on Earth. So this um, space, uh, Ariane 6 was really thought in that way for ecological reasons, but that's the part that didn't work. Now, the rest of the mission was successful. Successful. Uh, it was hailed by Emmanuel Macron, but it was also hailed by NASA, Bill Nelson, because now NASA will also be able to uh, order flights from Ariane 6, because there's a lot of collaboration when it comes to sp space explorations. So it's a big congratulations to all of the teams of the 13 European countries that have been working on this for years. They uh, really encountered a lot of pitfalls, COVID, rising prices. One of their historical um, uh, partners that also decided to go with SpaceX just recently. Uh, and this is what prompted Martin Science to use this phrase, which I think will become iconic, which is, Ariane is back. Okay, so Ariane is back. But at the beginning, I asked this question about whether or not Europe can have independent access to space again. With this blast off, has that been achieved? Well, that's what we hope. This mm. is only the first flight. But of course, the goal was to be able to restore some of Europe's sovereignty, because for the last year, Europe hasn't been able to send any satellites uh, on its own into space. The reason why is because if you look at the heavy launchers, Ariane 5 retired a year ago, and then the Russian Soyuz were sidelined because of the invasion in Ukraine. And then if you look at the lighter uh, launchers, Vega C wasn't able to carry out its maiden flight. So literally, Europe was left without any means to send any satellites into space uh, without having to go through other countries like the U.S., other companies like SpaceX. Uh, now, the other uh, the other goal was, of course, to be able to show SpaceX that it's still in the technological race. Uh, it's not a reusable uh, rocket, but it has shown that it has technological innovations aboard. Julia Seeger, thanks very much indeed.